Biodiversity Lecture, Saving Spaces, Saving Species. Why is it important to you? Speaker Oliver Hillel, Program Officer, Secretariat of the Convention on Biological Diversity. Location, John Abbott College, St. Anne de Bellevue, Montreal Island, Quebec, Canada. Date, September 17th, 2009. Organized by Doris Miller, Coordinator for the Nature Connection Activity. To thank you all for coming today and to welcome Oliver Hillel from the Secretariat of the Convention on Biodiversity, who will talk to us about why it is so important to save the species that exist in the world now. So, Oliver, thank you. Thank you very much, Doris, and uh, thank you all for being here, for taking the time from uh, your schedule, and also an important lunch time that should be could be outside, uh, enjoying biodiversity among other things. Uh, I just wanted to uh, start by maybe telling you that uh, for me, the the reason to come here was was um, an interesting challenge because uh, Doris uh, suggested we, we discussed the, the theme, which would be saving spaces and spa saving species, and why this is important, in particularly to you. And and I'm thinking here of John Abbott College students, faculty, other people who took the time to come from NGOs or or other places, and to try to make it relevant to you. In terms of my experience, and, and for that maybe I'll, I'll just try with a few minutes to tell you who I am and how I come to be here so that that also becomes more relevant to understanding what I'm saying, what, what I'm trying to share with you. Uh, I'm Brazilian and I work at, with the United Nations in a UN agency that is based here in Montreal. Many people don't know but we have at least four offices of the United Nations here in Montreal, one on civil aviation. UNESCO has a statistics office here, UNEP has here a multilateral fund for the implementation of the Montreal Protocol on ozone depleting substances. And you also have here the, the headquarters or, or the secretariat of the so-called Convention on Biological Diversity, which is where I work. And um, it's an interesting situation because the convention is a so-called multilateral environmental agreement, meaning basically that countries come together and agree on some, some issues. Uh, it has the force of international law, whatever force that means. It's not a lot, I can assure you. Uh, as, as we joke in the UN, the UN is only as strong as its member countries want it to be, which doesn't mean a lot because people don't want the UN to have that much power because, of course, every country that votes in the UN wants to be absolutely sovereign in terms of what happens in, in their own countries. So in that sense, um, my experience with the theme of today, which is biodiversity, comes from that perspective of an intensely political and economic debate in international cooperation and international development on the issue of biodiversity. For you to have a perspective, um, I'm Brazilian and I actually was there in 1992 in Rio when a very, very significant international conference happened, uh, which was the, the first world conference on, on environment and development. And of course, those two words were very important at the time because some of them were talking about development, mostly the developing countries like Brazil and many others. And there was a lot of discussion about environment, mostly fronted by those countries that had already gone through their development and were now trying to care for mostly somebody else's environment. They weren't that good at caring for their own, but it's always easiest to tell the other person that they're not doing enough for the environment. Anyway, that was one of the three conventions signed there. The other one was on desertification, and the third one, and probably the most visible, was the one on climate change. So these three conventions started there. Today, biodiversity has uh, 193 countries that sign it, including very much Canada. Canada is, it has been one of the first signatories to that. And these come together in the so-called Conference of the Parties. And a couple of years ago, they decided that one particular subject, the international transportation of genetically modified organisms, was important enough as a subject 
to merit what we call a protocol. That means you have a convention, means all countries say we want to collaborate on a few things. Then they say, well, we, we really want to be more precise on certain issues that are more important to us. In this case, they say, let's do a protocol. That's how the Cartagena, which was signed, of course, in the city of Cartagena protocol, on biosafety came to exist. And so Canada is also a signatory to that. Um, well, the, the, when we talk about biodiversity, let me try to make that, and, and I think my main message, the, the two main messages I would have today is uh, that biodiversity is really an essential concept for all of us. And, and because it's such an abstract concept, we don't realize that. But what I want to try to do today is to make it more concrete to all of you and uh, so that we understand what's at risk here and what's happening. Uh, but at the same time, of course, the, 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 the CBD understands biodiversity as variability among different species, animals, varieties. It has a huge implication. It is agricultural biodiversity, meaning diverse species of, of corn or of, of cattle or of, of any other uh, food-related um, production. And, and therefore, that's also biodiversity. But it's also biodiversity in the sea, biodiversity in islands, biodiversity in the cities, biodiversity within us. I don't know if you all realize that 20% of our weight is actually not human at all. Did you know that? 20% of our weight is made of bacteria and other living beings all over us. It's an amazing uh, data. But when I read it, I, I thought, well, that makes sense because we are also, in many ways, a product of biodiversity and a, a benefic biodiversity, mind you. So it's not bi terrible bugs, it's just things that are in fact part of us. So when, when we talk about biodiversity, it means all the range. For those of you who are interested in biology, there's nowadays people think that they have described more or less about five million species among insects, everything, plants, fungi, the whole nine yards. But they, of course, know that there's a lot more that we have no clue exists. In fact, when scientists try to gauge how many species exist, they have really no clue. They could tell you 10 times more, they could tell you 50 times more. The fact is, we simply don't know. And this is what those people are discussing. They're discussing conservation, meaning leave it there, try to keep it. Very importantly, they're talking sustainable use of biodiversity, meaning how do we use it uh, without destroying it. But they're also talking about how can the benefits from the use of biodiversity in food, in medicine, in, in clothing, in, in what have you, how can the benefits of this use be more fairly distributed? Uh, it's like this. 17 countries in the world have gotten together and declared themselves mega-diverse countries, meaning that they own a huge amount of species, or they, they are the stewards rather than own uh, a, a huge amount of species. They are uh, only a few countries, but they are said to possess the, the vast majority of that biodiversity. Now, a country, say, like uh, Australia or Brazil, they're both mega-diverse, Canada is not, but that doesn't mean that Canada doesn't have important species. It just means that if you compare the amount of species of each country, Canada does not make it into the first list. It makes it probably within the 25 or 30 countries. But for those that have biodiversity, what's happened in the past is that countries, other countries have come in, taken resources, and we can, you know, if you've eaten today, you most certainly have eaten something that comes from outside Canada in origin, potatoes, what have you, maybe some origin corn might have come from, from close by, but other than that, rice doesn't come from here and all that. So it's, it comes from outside. Who's getting the benefit of that? Who's getting the money for keeping those species? That's one of the things that's being discussed in the convention. End of part one of five. Continued.